Welcome one and all to Alex's review of Void Terrarium, a mystery dungeon style game from NIS America. It's one of my favorite genres, so I was very excited to hear what Alex had to say about this one. Let's take a look. Void Terrarium, stylized like someone just mashed random buttons on a keyboard, is the sweet story of how a little scavenger robot and an AI that in a fit of frustration caused the end of mankind find a mysteriously famished girl in a broken glass container in an underground scrapyard and they work together to nurture her back to good health. The robot who finds both of them after being kickstarted by a mouse who tragically died in the process. Now seriously, a moment of silence please. They quickly take a liking to this assumed last human on Earth, and so given directions from the immobile remains of the AI, they set out to acquire whatever foods or material they need to further improve the girl's living conditions. It's actually kind of funny and charming to read the dialogue between the robot and the AI, where they, as robots, try to understand and comprehend how a human works, and how they should go about nurturing her, like they just bought a pet or something. They discuss what she needs to eat and what a suitable name for her would be, with the AI suggesting random computer code, complaining that human names are just too difficult, but they finally settle on Toriko. A bit disturbingly, not too far into the game, you even unlock a Tamagotchi function, where you, wherever you are, away from the girl, can keep an eye on her health and hunger, if she gets ill, and if she has, well, you know, if she takes a dump and you need to clean it up. Still, though, overall, I do find the premise adorable, and on multiple occasions, got some heavy Wally vibes. Throughout your adventures, you will have multiple conversations with the regretful AI, either regarding the mysterious girl, the world you find yourself in, or the AI's tragic past that led to it exterminating all of mankind. In terms of gameplay, Void Terrarium is a dungeon crawler in the style of games like Omega Labyrinth Life and Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. You have your hub, which is presented in a 2D plane, where you can check on the girl in the terrarium, feed her, or clean her if need be, talk to the AI, or check on the food you have stored in the vault. You then set out into the dungeons, of which various sections get unlocked as you progress through the story, in search of whatever the AI needs you to find. You move around one tile at a time, in one of eight directions, and explore the underground ruins of man. You fight hostile robots and vermin, collect resources such as extra batteries and repair tools for your health, bombs of various kinds, weapons to boost your attack power, and perhaps most importantly, food for the girl. Food expires by one unit after every mission failed or successful by the way, so keep that in mind and feed her whatever is closest to expiration. Each step that you take as you explore the rooms and corridors also makes nearby enemies move, and with a few exceptions, once an enemy has spotted you, you can't shake them off, so better to take care of them than flee and risk getting either cornered or caught in a pinch. Do note though, if this does happen, you can dash past small enemies. When encountering an enemy, you can each take turns attacking, where you can use either your normal attack or your special attacks if you've unlocked any, and once defeated, you gain experience accordingly. Get enough of that and of course you'll level up, where you will then get a choice between two power-ups. These can be anything from a boost to your attack power or defense, a new special attack getting healed faster when you move around, or landing criticals more often. Be tactical in your decisions and judge by your playstyle and you'll be fine. Like I always choose stat buffs over more damage to grenades and such as I prefer to be front and personal. One critique I do have with these however is, it's a relatively minor one, is that you quickly find yourself cycling through the same ones. I died quite a few times uh, having to do the dungeons all over again so I quickly began to see recurrences. Not only does the game punish you for being careless, but since dungeon layout and enemies are all randomized, with enemies respawning every now and then, you can also quite simply be unlucky and find yourself outnumbered. This also caused my demise on a number of occasions. Oh, and if you didn't find the game hard enough already, bad weather, known as weather blights, can also occur in the dungeon sometimes, making enemies hit even harder. By the way, when you die, all of your findings get converted to resources, the stuff that you need to eventually craft furniture for the girl when you find the right blueprints. And any food that you found, you get the choice of storing in your vault. Then every time you enter a dungeon, you start from scratch, aside from so-called custom parts that let you start a dungeon with various skills pre-equipped, and various permanent bonuses you unlock as you craft new accommodation for the girl, such as more life, better stats, or more storage space. The latter I found is especially important, as like I briefly touched on before, you gotta maintain both your health and your energy while out on expeditions. 
Your health is important to, well, keep you alive. It will slowly replenish when walking around and can be manually healed by repair tools, whereas your energy, which will slowly decrease as you go along, will incapacitate and render you defenseless if it hits zero. You can replenish this with batteries, but the catch to both are that some healing items are contaminated, such as leak batteries, giving you various temporary side effects. If you are alone after a big battle, you can of course use them without worry, as it'll often wear off within seconds, but I did find myself in pinches where using a contaminated item and hoping for the best was my only option of hope for survival. One time, I got the side effect called lag, which, as the name implies, made the robot slow at reacting to my button inputs, making me a sitting duck for the oncoming threat. Another time I was one square away from the exit with a tough enemy ready to intercept. I had no health and I was under the confusion effect, making my controls all wonky, so I accidentally moved away from the exit instead of towards it. Being clever with your offensive and defensive items, as well as your positioning, is key to survival. Like if you're outnumbered, bottlenecking may be your best bet, though sometimes you're just plain unlucky. Also, unlike, say, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, you don't always reach the exit of a dungeon when you meet your objective. Instead, you can get to continue further into the dungeon, seeing how far you can go. Though, you can also at any time choose to self-destruct and go back to your home base. Which I found a bit strange, as the first dungeon kills you automatically when you venture too far. Oh well, maybe that just happened for story reasons. Only one time did I find two exits in the dungeon, one calling it a day while the other would have taken me even further. But since you keep all of your findings regardless if you die or make it to the exit, I'm not sure I see the point here. In terms of the audio, the title screen greets you with this wonderfully somber and beautiful piano piece set to the dim but beautiful background of the terrarium that you find the girl in. Once inside, the hub area continues in the theme of keeping the tune calm yet upbeat, giving you a sense of comfort like you look around and think, yeah, the world has ended, but there is hope here. Then, as soon as you enter the dungeon, the bass kicks up and you're suddenly thrown into the polar opposite of the spectrum with hardcore electronic tunes that get you so pumped for battle and trying to stay alive. Speaking of which, I know I whined about the game being hard, but it really is the fun type of hard. The just one more time kind of hard that keeps you wanting to get back on your feet and see if you can do better next time. The music really helps with that. The AI is the only character who has any dialogue, and none of it is voice, but I feel that like this is one of those few instances where having voice acting may have been detrimental to the experience. I mean, I don't know if this was a budgetary or artistic omission, but I'm glad it is there, or isn't there, you know what I mean. Visually, the game is kind of split in two. You have the gorgeous hand-painted 2D areas that is your hub, and then the dungeons of which are in fully 3D. I'm fine with the transition itself, but while the graphics are fine, as are the colours, they really pop. Um, but your surroundings can blend together with one another at times. I think the presentation could have been even better if they'd have stuck with the art style of the hub for the entire game. Then again, maybe it was a conscious decision, seeing how in the dungeons you are fully concentrated on just surviving and keeping an eye out for yourself, while in the quiet comfort of your home turf, you have more time to take in the visuals. Again, I'm not complaining as the graphics are wonderful and cute regardless, I'm just speculating. The game also ran very smoothly all the way through, only occasionally stuttering when I use the Switch's camera function to record footage, as apparently it doesn't like it when you hit that button during intense moments when there's a lot going on. In terms of value for £22.49, I feel like the game is perhaps ever so slightly on the steep side, but on the other hand, with how much is going on with the variety of gameplay and replayability, Despite the genre often getting criticised for its repetitive nature, I feel like for this money, you're getting the most out of it. I certainly was never bored. You can wait for a sale, maybe like 10 or 20% off, but if you're a fan of the genre to begin with, this is a great addition to the Nintendo Switch's dungeon crawling library, and you can safely add it to your collection. The game also does come with some inbuilt achievements that make up for Nintendo's persistence of not incorporating these naturally. Uh, and while I appreciate the effort, they just aren't the same. Not a detriment to the game, of course, just a personal opinion. Overall, if this kind of overhead dungeon crawler is your thing and you like a good engaging story that doesn't take itself too seriously and you are hungry for more of the genre after Pokemon Mr. Dungeon or Omega Labyrinth Life, this is certainly a quality title that I can recommend. While even early on it can be punishingly difficult, so not as beginner friendly as Pokemon, it's still a ton of fun and the further you get into the game, it keeps throwing newer stuff at you and mechanics from new weapons, customization, upgrades, new 
new enemies. The game constantly keeps you on your toes. And so even when you lose, you feel like you're learning. Normally, I don't like games that put you on a timer, meaning I got worried when the whole Tamagotchi thing was introduced, but resources are plentiful. You can clean the terrarium remotely through the cost of energy. And you can return at any time to feed the girl if her health is running low, which doesn't happen too quickly. So I didn't really find it too bothersome. Rather, I was always excited to see what new accommodation I would make for my pet girl. Ooh, that sounded wrong. I give Void Terrarium a respectable 8 out of 10. Alright, many thanks to Alex for playing, capturing and writing this review. It came to us late as though he was a soldier and helped us out on this one. For what it's worth, I ordered the game myself after this review, so I guess I put my money where Alex's mouth is. Many thanks to all of you for watching, especially if you made it this far. Plus, to all of our YouTube members and our executive producers, Ganicus, Dane Wilkinson, Brent McLean, Jonathan Rumor, and God of Resin. Thank you so much for your support. We love you guys, and we'll see you on the next one. Take care.